Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, it's me Alana, welcome back to my channel. You're all you are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, it is me Alana. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, there is something new in this video. I finally got a bookshelf. I obviously need like two more because I definitely will not be able to fit all my books in just one. But it's a step that I'm excited about, that I'm happy to have, because I can finally just film in front of a bookshelf, but I also can get all of my books off of my floor because it's slowly driving me nuts as the days get further and further into this year. So hopefully by the end of the summer I can have two more and I can get everything organized and it'll all look pretty. Anyways, moving on, this is not why I made this video. <laughs> this video is going to be my May wrap up. I know it's kind of late, but with everything going on, uh, it took me a minute before I could actually film this and edit it and post it. So. 30. For the month of May, I actually did a really good reading job. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to read in June because of the stress of everything, but I'm at least happy to say that in May, I actually had like some type of reading mojo come back to me. I ended up reading six books, which is pretty great. I did take part in two readathons. I took part in the Asian readathon and the Bookimon readathon which is like a pokemon based readathon um, i ended up not finishing both of those but i did get some books read for them so i'll take that because before this i wasn't really reading at all anyways so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and dive right into these books and tell you what i read so the first book i read in may was haiku volume one i gave this five out of five stars this was one of the books i read for the asian readathon um i love this series so much so i fell in love with the anime and so when i saw that the first six volumes were on sale at right stuff anime i decided to just go ahead and get them because it was a cheap sale for a bundle and i was like why not and i'm glad i did it because the series is so funny it's so adorable so it's about this uh volleyball team who's really striving to make it to nationals and um it focuses on these two main characters kageyama and hinata so kageyama is like a big volleyball star they called him the king back in middle school but because of that he kind of had a big ego and that definitely did not help him <laughs> once he uh moved on from middle school into high school and then hinata is a kind of a beginner to volleyball like he doesn't really have the fundamentals but he has the power to really jump despite how short he is and all he wants to do is just be a spiker and be a hitter and hit all the balls and everything and so uh they end up becoming rivals but then they end up unknowingly joining the same volleyball team so they're rivals on the same team but it's cool because it's so funny but you also get to see what it what they're like together and like the power that they have once they join forces and everything and it's just adorable and I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a good like sports manga to really jump into I definitely recommend this all right so the next book I read was Fruits Basket volume one this was a reread for me this was also for the Asian readathon and of course I gave this a five out of five stars like I can't not just love my favorite series I definitely still have all the feels for it because it's so good and it's so like deep in moments especially in regards to like the conversations of grief and uh, loneliness and everything and I just absolutely love the story in case you don't know it's about a girl named Toru Honda who is currently as you start the story she's living on her own in a tent and she realizes that the land she's living on is actually owned by a classmate of hers uh, named Yuki Soma and so he actually lives on that land with his cousin and uh, they let her move in with them once they realized that she's living in a tent 
and there she discovers on accident that they are part of the Zodiac. Their family has been cursed where each generation has 12 members of the family that turn into the Zodiac uh, if they are hugged by the opposite sex or just under a, like a lot of stress they'll just transform into like a dog or a rat or a cat and so she discovers this secret and so it's kind of like from there the story unfolds into this beautiful friendship that kind of develops through the stories between her and just the entire Soma family and uh, it definitely delves into the topics of loneliness and grief and um, like psychological abuse and the fact that like family can sometimes really disappoint you. I definitely recommend if you're looking for a really intense touching story this is definitely the story you probably want to do funimation has been doing a reboot of this where they're actually going to do the entire story and not just the first 25 episodes so i kind of wanted to reread this as well as watch that because i just love this story so much the next book i read was the art of breaking things by laura simpson uh, i gave this a five out of five stars i loved this so much so this is about a girl who she lives with her mother and her younger sister and her mother just has not had the greatest experiences when it comes to choosing men in her life and in particular there's one man that really traumatized the main character and so the mother ends up bringing him back into their lives and tells them that like they're dating again and the girl is panicking because she doesn't know what this means and she doesn't really want him in her life and she doesn't want to accept everything that she didn't really tell beforehand that happened to her from him and everything like that and it was just such a really touching story the only issue issue I really had with this and it wasn't like an issue issue it was just like okay so because of this thing that happened to her from then on she was taking part in very destructive actions and so she was drinking a lot she was doing drugs she was partying a lot and that's just kind of how she coped and developed just a really party girl reputation and the only it wasn't an issue but the only thing that really like concerned me or just was weird was that in one scene like someone pulled out a bag of cocaine and I was like you're 17 but not because like you can't be 17 to do cocaine more just I was like who where did you get that like where did you get this bag of cocaine from randomly at 17 but like it's not surprising because I definitely believe that can happen but it was just like an experience I had never experienced before as a teenager so I was just like whoa like wasn't expecting that to show up at this party, but okay. The things I did love about this, though, was one, so the main character is an artist, so she's trying to get into art school, and so a lot of her, the way she's expressing her emotions is through her paintings and her um, drawings and everything. So I loved that because uh, I definitely love when a character is an artist and you get to really delve into what that means for them. But the other thing I did lo love was the conversations of consent in this story. So... There was a moment where one of her friends had taken advantage of her because she was drunk and later his girlfriend found out and I was expecting the girlfriend to be all pissed like stay away from my band but later she was like uh you did you were drunk there was no way you could have consented like I don't like you but like that wasn't your fault kind of thing and so I, I loved that so much and so you see that happening throughout the book of just like the conversations of consent and what that really means and the other thing I really loved was there was a love interest in the story, but it didn't, like, he was kind of gone through, out the majority of the book due to reasons. And so I loved that didn't, that didn't take precedent and that didn't become, like, a crutch for her to lean on. I don't know how to describe it, but sometimes books like this do that where they're like, oh, the romance will save them. But, like, honestly, it doesn't. And so I loved that this book didn't do that. I will say trigger warnings for flashbacks of sexual assault, uh, flashbacks of just abuse, like psychological abuse, trigger warnings for drinking and drug use, and uh, I think there are more, but I cannot remember. But I definitely encourage you to read this if you want to. Definitely look up the reviews to make sure that all the trigger warnings are there just so you know what you can and cannot handle. The next book I read was a reread. It was Shadowland. 
by Meg Cavett, which is the first book in the Mediator series. I'm so glad I read this. I had been trying to reread it all month, and so I'm glad I finished. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It was funny. It was, uh very like adventurous and everything uh so in case you don't know this is an older series by Meg Cabot so it's about a girl named Suze whose mother is, gets remarried and she moves to California with her new family she ends up getting a stepdad and three stepbrothers and the only thing that they, they don't know about her is that she can see ghosts and so she kind of takes it upon herself to help the ghosts cross over so she ends up getting enrolled into this Catholic school, which is like super old, which means a lot of ghosts. And she ends up staying in this old house, which also means a lot of ghosts. So she ends up gaining a ghost roommate because uh, she can't make him leave. And then in the school, she ends up taking the spot of this girl who uh, died. And so the girl's ghost refuses to leave because she's pissed that she's dead. And so Suze kind of has to make it her mission to get rid of the girl because she's also making it dangerous for the other students to be in the school due to uh, wanting revenge against certain people. But that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil it. But I definitely do enjoy this and I'm excited to read the second one because I forgot how funny this was and also just how like nostalgic it kind of is because you could definitely tell it's like an early 2000s series almost. So... The next book I read was an older arc that I have that's called That's Not What Happened by Cody Keplinger. I gave this, I also gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I keep, I just realized that I gave majority of these, all of these a 5 out of 5 stars, which it means it was a good reading month for me. I loved this. It was very tough to read, very intense to read. Um, so this is an older arc. I think it came out in August of 2018. So it's obviously been on the shelves for a while and I just got around to reading it because I'm so slow. This is about a girl whose town uh, experienced a school shooting and it was her school. She was there that day and she was one of like the five or six students who was in that area where it went down and survived. So it's been like three years and she decides that uh, it's finally time that she wants to tell the truth. So her and her best friend were in the bathroom when the shooter came in and the shooter only killed her best friend. And so due to weird circumstances, they, a rumor has started about her best friend being like this a martyr and like saintly person when really she's like that's not what happened and so before she didn't say anything because she was kind of going through her own traumatic issues she was going through PTSD and just a lot of anxiety so she didn't even realize what was happening before it had already like kind of spread so far and so she kind of just let it be because she didn't really know how to fix it and she didn't want like to hurt anybody by being like, oh, this is wrong, when obviously they were grieving. But there come there is a moment where she realizes it's gone too far and she finally needs to tell the truth. And so because of that, it kind of spurs the others to really talk about that day. And it's kind of cool the way this story goes. So I thought it was gonna be one thing, but it actually spurred into another thing, which I thought was pretty cool. I will say trigger warnings for PTSD, anxiety, um, flashbacks of the stuff that happened during the school shooting, grief, um, I can't think of anything else right now, but definitely look up reviews so you can see if I missed anything. I loved the conversations behind behind everything that like everybody was so open and talking about it. And I the thing I loved most was that they never mentioned the school shooter shooter's name. If he ended up having to be in the story, they only referred to him as he or him, or if they, his name was mentioned, they just blacked it out. So you didn't really see it. And I loved that because they were like, he doesn't get to like have a presence in this narrative besides what he's done. I also like that it explored different aspects of the story. So like, of and like of each character. So it, it uh, talked about the idea of how people glorify certain people when things like this happen and yet forget other people when it's really everybody should be remembered and no one should really be glorified over the others. So I liked that this book focused on the other people that died too. I also loved the representation in this. So uh, the main girl is actually asexual 
and so there is a love interest and she kind of explains what that is to him so I really appreciated that uh, representation because it I wasn't expecting it but it was I think it like added an extra layer to the story too and uh, I, th I think the only thing that really annoyed me a little bit was like the religious aspect that played a role into this but I see why it did I definitely love the story I definitely think you should check it out um, it made me think a lot in depth about just like situations like this especially because it's so common now and the last uh book i read in may was an ember in the ashes by saw here and i gave it five out of five stars because this book was so good so i wasn't sure what to expect when i started this because i had no idea what it was about no idea what i was gonna get into but this book was so good okay i loved the char the two characters from the start elias and leia i loved them i thought uh it was so cool that like there were dual perspectives i literally had no clue where the story was going to go <laughs> and i think that made me love it even more because usually i can kind of guess but i was like i don't know what's gonna happen and it's making me anxious i definitely loved that you got to see like their perspectives from the opposite sides of the, the world they live in so like Elias was raised in this system that was about brutality and murder and keeping everybody in line whereas Leia was raised in the system where knowledge was power and uh, people saw her as weak and I just enjoyed that so much especially when uh, Leia stepped up and really decided to sacrifice everything for her brother and I like enjoyed I think I enjoyed Elias's perspective a little bit more just because uh I enjoyed hearing his thoughts especially in regards to like him not wanting to be how everybody wanted him to be and I'm so excited for the next book and see what happens because I literally don't know where the story is gonna end up going I know where I want it to go but I don't know where it'll go especially since it ends this year so <laughs> But uh, I'm definitely excited to pick up the next book. Uh, I will say trigger warnings for this for like really gruesome murders and talk about rape and sexual assault and all that kind of stuff too. Um, definitely check trigger warnings before you pick this up if you need to. Uh, but yeah, that's all I want to say because I don't want to go into... I don't want to say any more because I'm afraid I'm going to spoil it. But definitely pick up this series if you want a really good uh, just action-packed series and yeah especially i feel like i read this at a really good time too when all of this was going on with uh the killing of george floyd and everything i feel like this was like the thing that i needed because i was like holy shit this is kind of relatable in a way so yeah all right so this was a long video these were the books i read in may i am so glad that i picked these because i did not have a bad reading month and i appreciated that so much if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments on any of the books I read, whether you liked them, whether you've read them, whether you haven't read them yet, please let me know down below. I would love to talk to you. If you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. I'm stealing the idea from my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment. And if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. You are all sunflowers and a world full of weeds.